Hey everyone, it's Ashima Simone here and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be sharing some YouTube tips to help grow or start a successful YouTube channel now, like right now. Okay, so I've been on YouTube for um over five years now and I feel like I've accumulated a lot of great tips that could be very helpful for you. There are many YouTube videos out there that give you different tips, but I feel like everyone's experience is going to be a little different. So you can probably grab little information from everyone. And I'm just going to go off of what I've learned, my experience and things that I've picked up throughout the years. I'm not perfect. I'm still growing. I'm still learning things, but I feel like I've came to a point where I have some information to share that can be a little helpful just in case you're new to YouTube, you want to start YouTube or you, you need to help grow your channel. I feel like I could be, be of help to you or you can pass this information on to someone else. So in this video, I'm literally just going to talk to you like we friends because we friends. If you subscribe now, we definitely going to be friends <laughs> and just literally give you information and tips as if I was talking to a bestie you know because that's how i would like someone to give information to me i just shared in my vlog prior to this video that i had quit my nine to five job <laughs> that i was doing alongside youtube before that i was only doing youtube and then i was gonna like stop doing youtube and i started a nine to five and in that video i shared me quitting and i talked a little bit more about that and a lot of you guys were resonating with me much more than i thought you were <laughs> like a lot of you were going through wanting to quit your nine to five as far as like work from home job or just just having struggles so maybe some of you are thinking about starting a YouTube channel or want to pursue more of YouTube so that's why I was like let me just come and do this video it's been well overdue I think I've attempted this video a couple of times before and it just never happened so now I'm just gonna put it out there so let's just get into this I would recommend to get like a piece of paper or something to jot down things that you probably are not aware of or things that can be helpful because I'm just gonna be chatting okay so sit back relax get comfy and just soak up this information so I myself have a book here with um some information as like an outline so that I don't go off on any tangents because I could talk okay I could your girl loves to talk so the first thing I would say if you want to start posting to YouTube so this is going to be for like beginners and then I'll get to the part of growing your existing channel but I feel like it makes sense to start with information for people that are trying to like start up okay figure out what you want to post to YouTube before you even start YouTube like I wouldn't say just come and just start posting anything I know a lot of people give that advice all the time oh just start just start just start which is right but I feel like you need to grasp information first before you just start it's just like applying for a job like for example being a cashier at Starbucks right you're not just gonna go and just start you need to actually like kind of accumulate a couple of information first know your position know what you're gonna do before you begin yes to just get up on it and just start yes just begin the process so first you need to figure out what you want to post to youtube it literally could be anything i suggest kind of diving into your passions and interests you can never go wrong with that but sometimes your passions and your interests are not always something that you want to create videos about for example if you love hiking that may not be something that you want to make videos about so if you have different passions choose one that you know that you would be willing Willing to create videos about something that you're very interested in um, it doesn't even always have to be something you're an expert in it could literally be something you want to learn more about and you just have more interest and you could be like the guideline for others helping them understand a topic by you doing the behind the scenes work of research you can get inspiration from watching other people do YouTube for example someone doing hair tutorials you're like you know what I'm really into hair like I love this you know I have a couple of tips and tricks that I could teach someone like I really know how to like down a frontal or I have a little trick that I love to do and that could just be like the opening or maybe you want to produce videos about that but one thing I also would say when choosing your topic make sure it's something that you can create endless videos about because you don't want to just get stuck with um I don't know doing I don't know pranks which I hate I'm, that just came to my mind I know some people like that but say you just 
have a couple of pranks and then you just stuck after like the 10th video you don't know what else to produce you don't want to have anything that's unreachable like unrealistic write down 50 to 100 video ideas for a specific topic or topics don't put yourself in a bubble i would I literally from my experience everything's gonna be from my experience when you put yourself in a bubble sometimes you have more than one interest and you don't want to get bored because once you get bored and you're not passionate about what you're doing anymore you won't be able to be genuine or produce the content you'll probably just be doing it like work that happened to me when you lose the passion for it is you don't want to show up no more after a while so I would say don't put yourself in too much of a bubble I know there's this thing about niche down niche down niche down I found you can have a couple of interests as long as as you know how to tie it all in together and you're not like all over the place for example you're doing a cooking and then you're doing gaming and then that's just it's too much try to find a way to kind of make it be cohesive when you find yourself having interest in more than one topic more than likely you'll fall under the lifestyle niche or niche whatever you want to call it the whole category of lifestyle because that's what I am I'm a lifestyle content creator lifestyle blogger you'll find yourself falling under that category when you have more than one interest or you want to produce more more than one video topics right lifestyle is a great niche but it can be a little hard at times to grow with a lifestyle topic because there's a lot of different things going on I would always say in the beginning try to like stick to like one or two types of videos until you build up your audience you could start to introduce them to other things so it's hard to grow when you're doing vlogs when people don't know you but if you kind of keep it focused on one thing you're not all over the place it'll kind of work for you in the beginning the rule of thumb for me here is when when you know you're passionate about something you'll never run out of ideas so even if you have your audience that's just there for your food content and then you have your audience that's just there for your fashion content you can keep them both pleased as long as you're always dishing out content for both topics that you're interested in if that makes sense but make sure it's topics that you're able to kind of keep the motion going because if you put too much on your plate you ain't gonna know how to really keep the flow of the videos if you have too many topics. So that's why I say pick one to three topics to create videos about. That's where you have to write it down. Write down what you wanna create videos about and then write down about 50 to 100 videos on all three of the topics and then you'll know which one you should either focus on or if it's just two or all three of the topics. That's how you figure out what you really can make videos about and something that you'll really be passionate about and you know you won't run out out of fuel for creating the video <laughs> that was a mouthful that was like a whole umbrella of things under that first tip so the next thing now you need a channel name this is for those who's beginning try to be very creative try not to make it be something too like off the wall where it's too much for someone to write in like in the search engine to look you up to remember to spell because you need to be found you know also something a little catchy Kristen's closet with a K something catchy or your name you can never go wrong with your actual name either your first name your last name or both together mine is a stream of Simone you can never go wrong with using yourself because you are your brand no matter what you're doing you are your brand so now that you got your top pick we're just gonna just pretend you have your topics already you have your channel name you have your video ideas and all of that ready to go the next thing now you need filming equipment the simplest form we're gonna just say starting out you need a camera because you need something to actually film those video topics that you thought of the content you need to get it onto the platform so in order to do that you have to film it with a camera so you can either go out and buy a camera if you want to go off right off the back and just go and invest in a camera by all means go ahead because now YouTube is like such a thing now that the quality <laughs> has gotten a little higher before people would just film like off of like their video their webcam I don't know or or like scratchy little images and it would get viewed but now like it's a little up there now but you can still make it look good by just using your phone you could even use your iPhone I've used that for many videos I'm sure some of you have make sure you're using the back camera most of the times because this is going to be the best quality we all know that the back camera is the best quality and I've used the front camera a lot of times we, like when I want to vlog on my phone have it like this the key to that is to make sure that you're you have good lighting you could use natural lighting when you're outside and it's sunny and you're using your front camera it will work pretty well because it's natural lighting the look from the back camera is brighter obviously but then the front camera is not as 
pixelated. So that's when you want to go ahead and make your lighting work for you. So you could either use a ring light like what I'm using. I'm using just a regular ring light with the part to attach the camera. And you could use like the box studio light. I know there's more expensive lighting systems and the whole studios and stuff, but I'm just talking for not breaking the bank right now. I've been doing YouTube for so long and I, I haven't even did all, I think I've had the umbrella lights one time, but that's just too much. <laughs> I just love just having just a ring light. Or you can use the lighting from the window, the natural lighting from your, your window or be outside. It could be a little noisy outside. So I would say natural lighting from your window. Make sure you're facing the sun. Want it to face the sun because if you're against the sun it's gonna wash you out that's another tip if anyone's not doing that already i know these are like basic tips right here but this is for anyone that doesn't know or they need to like make sure they start to incorporate these things right some cameras that i know of like the top of my head the canon canon eos 90d the 7ti the canon g7x mark ii great for vlogging then they have the sony zv1 there's different cameras that you could choose from i would say research choose what's best like pricing wise i know they can get a bit pricey um you can get vlogger kits now where they come with the tripod batteries memory card all of that it's so easy to just look that up you can order it online go in the store like best buy amazon you go with what works for you but if you're just eager to just get up and start you can start out with your phone audio you can get a mic of course best quality using a mic I haven't used a mic yet and I've been doing pretty well. I want to use a mic though. Like I want to upgrade my <laughs> content. So if you're already doing that, kudos to you. I'm going to give you the best advice. So I want to start to use a mic. Okay, but I've actually been successful without a mic. So you can use the built-in microphone on the camera or on the phone. So obviously on the camera, it's gonna be better than on the phone, but for both, you want to make sure you're in close range when you're speaking so that you can be heard because it's not as great as a microphone, obviously. So you either wanna be close enough or you wanna project your voice. Don't scream, but project your voice. I know for a fact, the audio on the phone can be very low if you're not speaking up, if you're not close enough, it can be low. There's ways to make it louder, put up the volume when you're editing, but if you do it incorrectly, it will make it too loud and it'll hurt people's ears, especially when they have their headphones in and they're watching you or you're on their phone. Yeah, so just try to make sure the audio is clear enough and you can upgrade to the microphone, upgrade to the ring light, upgrade to all that expensive lighting once you get to that point. So there's levels, take your time. I know a lot a lot of people they go straight to buying all the expensive things which if you can that's awesome go right ahead but don't make that stop you if you don't have it just first get the bare minimum of everything so that you can start getting to, to into the groove of it because you also don't even know if you're gonna want to do youtube you don't even know if you're gonna like to do youtube yet so you have to try it out first to see if it's for you now moving on to the next thing because i think i did say a lot of stuff just now right <laughs> editing editing is something that i would highly recommend only because you can have some background noises if you have children i'm a stay-at-home mom like i have my child sometimes she'll make noise while i'm talking i need to pull like she just made noise oh i think she did that on purpose actually because i said that <laughs> you can um have a lot of ums and i know i say um a lot i say i know a lot and that could waste a lot of video time and getting to the point which is okay because sometimes you could be a little nervous on camera or sometimes you're trying to look for your words or find the right wording or sometimes you need to cut something out completely out of the video editing will come in clutch or you can edit to just make the video a lot better more entertaining more great to watch you know or maybe you need to do a voiceover so i use imovie on my macbook you can use imovie or you could use final cut pro which is what you gotta you gotta pay for final cut pro i think now it's 300 dollars imovie comes free with your apple products you have apple you know that so I just use iMovie. I do, you could do basic editing, but editing always does help. You can work your way up to the Final Cut Pro. You can work your way up to all of that big time editing. You can literally still grow and be successful by using the basic things or the bare minimum, for the, for example, because I feel like it's the con it's having great content, just following all the other things that I'm gonna tell you that will lead you in the, on the right path. It, although, listen, I'm not even gonna sit here and tell you don't edit your video. Edit your video, <laughs> edit at least something to not make it look so generic. <laughs> You know, just edit the video to get the part out where you're turning off the camera and moving the camera around. And in any way that you can make it look professional without breaking the bank, do that. All right, 
sorry about that so the key to finding great content is a combination of your passions of course making it searchable good content that'll get views because i don't care what nobody want to say she's just doing this for views or everything's not for views yes it is for views putting content on videos majority of the time it's for views why wouldn't you want to put unless you're just uploading you know just for memories or a place i mean you could just have the videos on your phone or your computer for that if you're going to be posting to youtube and you want to take it seriously and you want to be successful or even make it your career one day the views is what matters i mean that's what it is <laughs> that's what it's all about so you want to, it to be searchable content especially in the beginning so you could be found if you're not being found no one's gonna know how to watch your video it's in a whole big pool of a million gazillion videos a combination of passions make sure it's searchable content as far as like your title a little bit of trending because sometimes when the trend is over it's over so you could do a little bit of trending topics or evergreen content or our classic content that will never go out of style so that's what evergreen content means for example how to bake a cake how to tie a tie it's so basic but that is evergreen content so whatever topic you choose you can do something that's evergreen and put a twist on it and then also a little bit of what your audience is looking for for example what brought them to your channel you want to continue to make videos about that so it's a whole mixture combination of everything like that to create great content that gets views so if you want to get views right the most important thing is your thumbnail and title. So the most important things are your thumbnail and title before you even get to the video, right? Because your thumbnail is, is like literally a preview of the video before you go, before you click on it. For example, the storefront, before you go into the actual store, however they have the front set up with the mannequins and the dress or whatever, that's gonna pull you in to go into the store. So literally that's what the thumbnail is doing. However that thumbnail setup is gonna literally decipher whether or not a person is going to click on the video to watch it. And then the title, because I feel like the thumbnail is what everyone kind of looks at first, opposed to the title. The title is more so when you're searching and people read the title as well, of course. And then you can also put text on your thumbnail, which also helps some people also don't read the title you need your title and your thumbnail to be eye-catching something clean clear so we know what's going on big enough easy to read font and all that cursive I don't know what that is especially if I'm looking on my phone I can't read that like I'm not about to strain my eyes to try to figure out what is written on this thumbnail <laughs> so it needs to be clear it doesn't have to be obnoxiously big but make it I say at least 70 the smallest as in as in font size 70 and up so that we can read it especially on the phone a lot of people watch from the phone bright attractive colors or just make it nice and clean and clear for the thumbnail i use pickmonkey to edit my, my thumbnails now pickmonkey is no longer free i know there is also photoshop it's canva and probably a couple of others you also can edit your videos on your phone i know you can edit your thumbnails on your phone i don't do that so i don't want to like recommend that but if you you want to research about that definitely do that because i know some people that edit and create their thumbnails on their phone they even upload their videos to youtube using the youtube app on their phone for your thumbnail you need like a like a clean cut picture but you want it to make sense to your content the easiest way to get a thumbnail for the perfect size and to make sense go like this freeze and count to three so in your head freeze so that when you're editing you can take that picture right there at that frozen still part or you could just take an actual photo obviously which will be nice and bright you can edit the photo to make it look nice and clean but don't make it clickbait where you're putting one thing and then it has nothing to do with what the person's gonna watch because a lot of people i know i would click out of a video that's clickbait clickbait is basically making me think that i'm gonna watch one thing and then you show me another don't do that. I would really recommend to don't do that. Yes, you could like spruce it up a bit, you know, exaggerate the truth a little bit, <laughs> of course, especially in the beginning, but don't, don't clickbait and make it totally off topic. Also plan out your thumbnail and your title before you even begin filming the video. This can make everything kind of just tie in and be cohesive. 
so that you'll remember what you need to take a picture of plan out what you want to take a picture of what you want your thumbnail to be how you want your thumbnail to be placed for example if i'm going to be doing a review on this phone i want my thumbnail to look like this right Plan it out really quickly how you want the thumbnail to look so that you can situate it where I can write some words right here. So I need to be far off to the left. No, my left. And I'm like this. Or. And I freeze. So if you're going to do it like that. Or you could just take a number of photos, put them together, and then just put words on it. However, but plan it out prior to so that you're not stuck with no thumbnail or you have to get an unstill image that just looks crazy. Plan out your title, search up keywords that are gonna be searchable, know how to place it in your title. The most searched key term, you always wanna push it more towards the front of your title because that's what Google, YouTube, under the same thing, come up first and search. In your description box, keywords, search terms. Don't just write, oh, cooking, how to. Don't do that in your description box, you want to write out make it make sense write out like a couple of sentences about what's going on in the video you could put timestamps in your video if you have a number of things going on sometimes some people just want to watch a certain part of your video so instead of them have to search through your video put the timestamps it'll help them look for a specific part of the video some people just watch the whole thing but you know it's better than no views than to just have a portion of your video be watched i started adding timestamps i know it's very helpful it's helpful when i'm watching someone else's video especially like vlog the vlog is really long and some part of that title drew you to it and you want to know what's going on in that part of the vlog but you don't want to go look for it timestamps can be very helpful as well outline your videos before you film them outline the video so that you can follow know what you're talking about you don't want to miss any information but you don't want to sound robotic or like you're reading from a prompter or anything like that <laughs> this portion that i'm about to tell you is something that you can't really make up and if you do people are gonna find out all right have personality or just be yourself now if you don't really have personality you just gotta just be yourself you know you never know who's gonna like you and most of the time people subscribe to your channel because they like you or the information that you're giving them so you can either be entertaining or informational or just you know create content like how to contents or teaching like tutorials think how to do stuff you don't even have to physically be on camera you could just be show what you're doing with your hands or whatever it is you could do a voiceover if you don't feel comfortable sitting down here and talking like this you can do it like I'm doing my hair I'm not talking record a voiceover telling you guys what I'm doing but I'm not talking some people don't know how to do the two at the same time some people when they're doing their hair they look like really mad <laughs> and you don't want to you know push people away by not seeming inviting so then you could do a voiceover always make sure that you're not copying other people i know right now a lot of people are copying each other everyone's doing the same thing but if i wanted to watch the same person do the same thing five times i literally would just watch that person five times. Like I don't need to keep going to other different channels to see someone being the same way, acting the same way, doing the same things. Be yourself and that's how you avoid that. Just be yourself. Watch people for inspiration, of course, but don't copy. I know it's tempting, it is tempting, it's tempting. But just know you ain't gonna be able to keep that up because that's not who you are. You're not even gonna feel comfortable because you're not being who you wanna be. Be you, people wanna watch you for you. If they don't like you, oh well, because you can't change that. You can't change who you are, just be who you are. Don't be a people pleaser. Make sure your background is clean. Make sure you look at least presentable. No one's saying that you have to have a full face of makeup on and you have to have your, your finest designer, everything, but be presentable. You don't know, I learned this, okay? Listen, I learned this. My background used to look crazy, girl, and I used to come on there with my ed my bonnet. <laughs> I don't do those things anymore, okay? Unless I'm doing a video that inquires that. Make it make sense, though. Like, whatever you're doing, make it make sense. Like, you're not gonna be on camera doing a how-to video, sit-down video with your bonnet on. I know some people do that. I don't know why, but be presentable. Okay, people like to look at good presentation. If you had a plate of food brought to you on a table at a restaurant, and it was was rice chicken and, and, and salad right say it was on the plate and everything was jumbled up the salad the rice the chicken was like it's fresh food but they say they just jumbled it all up in the plate and put it i don't know some people probably would eat it but it don't look pleasing to the eye you'll be like what the hell was this right like as soon as it came you'll be like what the hell was it like is this what I, what is this right so presentation i learned that over time presentation matters so presentation matters so make sure your background is clean nice if it's a thing where you're cleaning and it's already messy that's like i said just make it make 
So if you've already been making videos and you notice that your background looks crazy for every video or you're not presentable, try to fix that up. Try to make your thumbnails more cleaner cut. You know, take more time on your thumbnails with presentation. It's a production. You don't know who's gonna see your video. Even if you're a small YouTuber right now, you don't know who's gonna see your video. That was me. I didn't know that a lot of my videos were gonna go viral when they did, like in the past. Some of those videos are not even up anymore. And I was just like, oh my God, like now that I'm where I'm at you're gonna make mistakes it's okay but I'm giving you advice right now so you could avoid that or you can correct it it is what it is but this is me telling you so you can avoid that if you can to grow your existing channel take a look at like your highest viewed videos like ranked in the top 10 that can help you create you know more videos like it don't carbon copy the video because you don't want to keep making the same exact video over and over but you could put a twist on it and that can also help you create more videos because that's definitely something that i did that's where creativity brainstorming comes in because you have to put in some sort of work, you know? And like I said, you can always use other people that's already on the platform for inspiration. Think of creative ways to deliver your information. So entertainment or information is the two things that I would say works out very well. Or you could just do a mixture of both. I do a mixture of both. It's kind of hard, but once you get the hang of it, most definitely can be successful at it. Of course, you know, I couldn't leave without saying the number one thing is to be consistent because if you start something and then you stop, it's not gonna go anywhere. You have to be consistent in a way where you can post a video once a week. As long as you consistently post once a week, I'm telling you, you'll be fine. Twice a week, three times a week, four times a week, daily. As long as you're not losing the quality concept of it, you can put out as much videos as you want as long as you are putting the quality. The quality remains the same, which is harder when you're doing daily videos. If you're doing four videos, five videos a week, it's harder that way. So I would recommend to at least the minimum to really grow three videos a week. I feel like will work out really well. Also, you don't want to push out too, too much content and then people get sick of you too. <laughs> Unless it's something like where you're doing a marathon, like Vlogmas or something like that, that's different. Keep the quality. Like I said, these are things that I learned. Keep the quality. Oh cross promote yourself on either Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, other social media platforms that can help you because there's different audiences, different places. I also know there's a thing now with YouTube shorts that can also help boost your exposure because YouTube shorts are seen by people that's not even a part of your niche or your topic it can expose you to like a different world it's kind of like tiktok so that's something new you can also do youtube shorts that's relating to the topics that you already talk about on your channel this is something that can help you grow this is something i just recently learned so you could make like a short video about if you're doing for example cooking like a little short video which is a youtube short of like a recipe or something like that real fast it can draw in people to come that didn't know about your channel existing already don't pay for views. Don't pay for subscribers. Do it naturally because they, they are obviously going to be dead viewers. They're not physically dead, but they're not there because they want to be there. You put them there by paying for them. Don't try to make everything perfect. Just do your best. Make sure you're doing your best to just start and see if this is what you want to do. Put your all into it. Take your time. It's not a race. It's not a competition. Although I know you, you're seeing other people's getting a lot of views and you can get there as long as you just put in the work. You just gotta literally put in the work and you will get to exactly where you wanna be. Cause obviously you don't know how long it took that person to get to where they are. You know, you don't know what work they're putting in. Let me know down below in the comment section if you have any questions. I hope that I was able to answer any of your questions, lingering questions or provide you with information that you didn't know about before or kind of put you on the path, put a battery in your bag, gave you some inspiration, something with this video. Please let me know that this video was worth making right now. Although I threw a lot of information at you, but anywho, I was just trying to be real and raw and that's the best way I want information like this for something that could be so challenging growing or being successful on YouTube you know it's not really the easiest thing in the world but I'm telling you you can do it as long as you put your mind to it and you do what you need to do follow the guidelines put in the research put in the work it'll get done trust me I literally was there when I had zero subscribers once I'm on the top I've made new channels and 
start over so many times just to come back here <laughs> so i know how to, to do it you know i know how to start and grow a youtube channel i've done it so many times before so i hope that this was informative and if it was share it with someone else thumbs up the video of course please that will let me know i didn't just sit here for no reason talking to my mouth today cotton mouth coming now i will see you in the next video okay bye